My name is David May, and I serve here at St. Mary's as the rector. And this is the Reverend Dr. John Miller, longtime rector here at St. Mary's and now rector emeritus. I'm so grateful that we have this beautiful, beautiful day yes. um, to continue to give thanks to God for Rand, for his beautiful life and all of the goodness and light and mercy and joy and redemption that God showed forth through his life. Um, you should have a little bulletin that includes your responses. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Ran, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Let us read together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading now from the Gospel according to John. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. 
and he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the son of man. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We've gathered here on this beautiful day in this beloved churchyard. Thank God for the life of William Randolph Cosby Jr., our brother in Christ, whose earthly labors are now complete, and who now is forever enfolded in the loving embrace of his creator. We remember with gratitude the life that God gave Rand at his birth and sustained throughout the span of years providing grace sufficient for his journey. Rand's biography is replete with reasons to be grateful for his presence among us, a positive presence that has affected his family and friends, his colleagues and companions, and all those who with him composed his story. His youth revealed his enthusiasm for sports of all kinds, but especially the enjoyment of playing, coaching, and watching baseball, from Little League to the Atlanta Braves, and his pleasure when fishing or boating or sailing. Wren promoted these passions throughout his life and passed them on to his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Wren recognized early on the importance of becoming a responsible citizen. His loyalty to community and country began in childhood and took definitive shape at John Marshall High School, where he rose through the ranks to become captain of the legendary Corps of Cadets. With esprit de corps and spit and polish, he honed his skills as a leader, made lifelong friendships, and taught the need for discipline and collaboration in public service. Marching with the John Marshall Cadet Corps in a parade marking the end of World War II was a particularly proud moment for him. As a young man, he enlisted in the United States Marine Corps to serve and defend his nation. With fidelity to corps and to country, he was brought to the Korean War where he served with bravery and honor. When he returned to civilian life, Rand furthered his academic career by enrolling at Washington and Lee University. There, he continued on the path of honor, tradition, civility, and intellectual rigor to become a well-rounded gentleman. His student experience at WNL was enhanced immeasurably by the fact that he was a Marine veteran, one who had experienced war. Then came marriage to his beloved Barbara. Their sacred nuptial bond would grow, endure, change, and mature by the grace of God for 55 years. They received the gift of four wonderful children who would offer Rand deep joy and a precious responsibility that he would challenge, that would challenge, teach, and bless him at least as much as he would impart to the children and generations of family to come. His wisdom, his practicality, his sense of humor, his maxims to live by became his family's curriculum, a legacy for daily living. After a brief stint at General Electric, the devoted son came home to lead his family's business, W.G. Cosby Transfer and Storage, as president. That is where Rand focused his energy and spent his working years in dutiful service, helping families move and relocate their worldly possessions safely and securely. Ran and Barbara were faithful members of St. Mary's Church, which was a small country parish when they arrived, but grew steadily during their time in this community. They were warm and affable, involved and earnest, making a point of being deeply respectful to their clergy. They saw me raised up in ministry, moving from stages from youth ministry to assistant rector and then to rector. That developmental process did not deter them from showing me honor and respect when I became their pastor. Rand signified his support by always 
always addressing me as Dr. John, <laughs> punctuated by a knowing smile. That touched my heart. I appreciated his care and his faith in me. Rand's life was filled with praiseworthy gifts and notable accomplishments. Also, like all human life, his life was beset by serious challenges and impediments. A powerful undertow that pulls at us all and threatens to undo us can only be overcome by the grace of God. Rand's life needed the outstretched hand of rescue, which took the form of the loving intervention of his children to reach a place of safety. Their love was the incarnation of God's eternal redemptive love, which is the power we all need, the power that makes us whole. With utmost care, sensitivity, truthfulness, and loving hope, Rand's children helped him become what St. Paul called a new creation. He stepped forward into that newness of being, beginning a process of transformation that would proceed into 32 years of re reaffirming one day at a time the way of recovery and health. That kind of transformation is what we witness to and celebrate today. It's called resurrection, the very same power that raised up Jesus from death to eternal life. Rand claimed the power of new being that God offered, and he became a man with a renewed vitality focused on the good of others. He invested himself in helping those in need to grasp their own Easter moment and encourage them to stay the course. God's gracious transformative power granted him the serenity to accept the things he couldn't change, community. In addition, he became a key participant in the St. Mary Seniors Group, relishing his time of fellowship, lunch, and learning with friends old and new. He devoted himself to a refreshed, deeper life in worship, mission, and ministry in this parish. And that vitality spilled over into the outside world beyond the walls of these church buildings and these grounds to delivering meals on wheels and providing nourishment for the hungry and help for the homeless. Rand's life was a witness to God's power of resurrection. His transformation made manifest the Easter hope of new being both in the now and in the realm of eternity. Rand's presence among us became a light on the possibility of renewal and drew us more and more toward the eternal life that he now fully enjoys. That is good news. That is good news for all of us. May God grant him eternal serenity and remember him with love forever. Amen. The liturgy continues with the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints. Where sorrow, sorrow and pain, pain are no more, more. neither Not sign, sign but life, life everlasting. everlasting. Into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant Ram. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. 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 Let us say together the song of Simeon. Lord, you have now have set, set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Ram, and we commit his mortal remains to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. 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 The God of peace you brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. This concludes the liturgy at the graveside. You are certainly welcome to linger here in this beautiful place as long as you wish. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, safe yeah, travel. We'll see you. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. Been there for a year now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. After quite a bit of travel. Yeah. 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 That's what happens, I guess, when you get older. <laughs> yeah. 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 Going on a little trip. I think he was ready to go. I think Ryan, Ryan saw him a little bit more, I guess. Yeah. It's a good I feel like it makes it easier because of time. Eastbound 64 at Parham. Uh, I believe the Cosby House is still standing. No, it was also part of the on ramp. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, so, that's right. And growing up, looking around the room, I would have to say, that except for Connie and Debbie and Bill. Uh, 
I probably didn't read it longer than anybody in the room. My parents were divorced when I was six, seven, and the like. But we never felt that we were lost, we lost something because we had another family. That was Cosmos. The Sea Clan, as the name of the boat said. The Sea Clan was, uh, took us in between Barbara and her uh, Feed the Multitudes pork roast. Uh, if anybody here remembers that, she could feed the multitudes with one pork roast, two cans of green beans, a couple of potatoes, and a loaf of bread. Uh, didn't matter how many people showed up, everybody got a plate. Uh, but we grew up in and out of the doors, we never needed to worry about locking the door, uh, and we just spent all of our time together. Bill and I cut an awful lot of grass at Clump Road before we could go fishing down at Canterbury Lake, but that's okay. That's okay. We learned a lot from being able to work like that, work together, and in some ways, I'd like to think Graham was responsible for that team building. Uh, he wanted the grass cut, there's no doubt about that. And he wanted to make sure that the trim job got done correctly. So we were down there with garden shears and our hands and knees doing the entire perimeter of the house. Uh, thank you, Uncle Ray. I remember one morning it was raining. Uh, everybody was getting ready to go to school. Rand was getting ready to go to work. Barbara was getting ready to go to school. Bill and I had made our triple uh, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich sacks and Barbara realized she had a flat on her car. Well, that put a stop into all the activity because it had to be fixed so that she could go. So she said, Brand, can you get the tire changed? And he says, I'm not changing that tire. And he said, Bill, and he knew one of us was going to answer. <laughs> so that's where I changed my first tire. It was at the Cosby household with Rand standing over me saying, break him loose first, jack it up, pull the lug nuts, put the new one on. Oh, you got to jack the seat, you got to jack it up a little higher. That was a flat tire. And, uh, so we got the tire changed. He went off to work. Barbara went off to work. We went off to school and the like. Just another lesson. Uh, think about what you're doing. I think I was about the same time he bought that Mustang uh, and was running around town. In it. Family of six. <laughs> the, uh, my favorite memory of uh, Rand, and the one I always think of first, was in the Sea Clan on the boat, the family boat. Uh, I remember going to the boat races, and Bill and I were discussing those the other day, going to the boat races up there by uh, Glee Point, uh, and before the superstructure got built up on the sea plane, it was still open almost a runabout. And the memory is Rand in shorts with those knobby knees hanging out, a pair of beat up ratty shoes, and uh, a t-shirt and that white bucket hat on top of his head. <laughs> Probably had a beer in one hand, a cigarette in the other, and trying to operate the controls on the on the boat and the like, laughing at somebody's joke. Or possibly one he came up with, because he was really good and quick. And that's why I know that all four of the Junior Cosbys uh, picked up their speed and wit from their uh, dad. There's no doubt about that, because he was fast. He was incredibly fast with a joke. I really like the way Dr. Miller mentioned Brand's recovery from drinking. And uh, in this particular case, I learned to drink from Rand and Nelson Eads and you man and Bobby Ball and, the, and all that crew down at the river. Did I have my difficulties? Yes, I did. And it's, it's an ongoing battle in a lot of ways, as anyone who's been there can tell you. But uh, I never realized Graham had been a Marine. I thought until I was 43 years old, and we were visiting Rand and Barbara over there at Mechanicsville, that Rand had been in the Army. And I said something to that effect. 
And he looks at me and he says, I've never heard the army. So, he said, I was a Marine. And I looked at him and I said, you are the quietest Marine I have ever seen in my entire life. Although I may have used language a little more explicit to the military verbiage of which he would have been used to. But, be that as it may, uh, he was a Marine, Nelson was Army, and uh, at my, when I left for the Army, uh, the two of them took me off to the side. And uh, both of them said, hope you never have to go. Well, Saddam Hussein and other things to say about that is Deb and I, my wife, we both went to the Gulf War. And next time I saw Ray, I said, sorry, it's one piece of advice I couldn't follow. So it worked out well. In the Sea Clan, I say thank you. To Barb, to Ray, I say thank you. And a song that has become very dear to me through the years, we all know it, or at least correction, we all know the first verse and the chorus. But uh, I use it a lot, both weddings, funerals, New Year's Eve, Robert Burns' birthday, the 26th of January. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot in days of old time? time? For old lang syne, my Joe, for old lang syne, will take a cup of kindness then for vengeance. Station wagon. 
we, that's what most of us are. At least three of us learn to drive on. Who here learned to drive on that car? Oh, okay, <laughs> great plan. Yeah, okay. It was a straight drive in the steering column. We're in the column. Anyway, I remember one year being so excited about going to Florida at Christmas. Uh, one, our grandmother, his mother actually lived down in the St. Pete area. And um, we were all crammed in there, and I think we were also dragging a new hog because between the clothes and the presents, um, and four of us, I think, were squashed in the back seat early. And that's before we cared about seat belts, right? Uh, so we were headed out of town, and it was after Dad had gotten off work, so we were getting a late start. And we ate dinner in Petersburg, so y'all know this is not very far outside of Richmond. <laughs> So, some dear friends of theirs from Lynchburg had suggested, well, when we travel, we give our kids Dramamine. And they said, well, we've never done that. And they said, it works like a charm. So, as soon as we ate dinner, they gave us each Dramamine. And within like 30 minutes, I think we were all. And they, whoops, <laughs> this is on water. Goodness, anyway. Um, <laughs> so we were quiet for, I don't know, hours and hours and hours, and I think they probably couldn't stand the fact that it was so quiet. Um, and I remember we were getting to, we were going through Georgia, and we were so excited to get to Florida, and Dad said, now, I mean, don't expect it to be bright and sunny and warm just because we crossed into the state of Florida. But guess what happened, y'all? <laughs> We were all in there, the, the storm followed us down there, but we were all into Florida and we were rolling down the windows, it was beautiful, it was balmy, and he had just eat the words. But um, that, was, that was our first trip down there, we stayed in um, this St. Petersburg, is that what it was? Treasure Island? Treasure Island, but the storm did follow us down there, so. We had like two days of sunshine and warm weather, and then it got cold. But that was that was my first like real big Christmas trip. I remember ten years ago. The other thing I came across was a coin, and I'm gonna read it. it. Just made me kind of be happier about losing somebody. I know a lot of times we can be sad. And, I mean, I am sad. And and I know everybody here misses him as well, but this is a point, and it's called, He is Gone. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what he would want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. That's by David Harkins. Thank you. So I guess uh, during the service, we need to raise it up. Hold on. Uh, during the service today, they mentioned uh, how much Grandpa liked baseball. And uh, when I was a kid, I knew I got to go to a Richmond Braves game or something like that, and, and we would talk baseball. Um, and that was kind of one of the ways uh, that I related with Grandpa when I was little was because he liked baseball and I like sports and so that was something I could learn from him. Uh, so uh, probably one of my favorite grandpa memories was uh, when I moved up to Virginia and I can't I moved up here in 2000 at the end of 2008 it was a couple years later and the Washington Nationals hadn't gotten good at baseball yet so uh, the tickets were really cheap to buy online at the end of the season because uh, they were selling them to whoever was willing to buy them at the time and so uh, I got two tickets I asked grandpa if he wanted to go 
and we drove up to Washington uh, one Sunday morning, and uh, job was going well. He wanted me to, he wanted to pay me back for the tickets. I said no, I'll, I got the tickets. He said, well at least let me buy you a meal or something. So we stopped at Cracker Barrel <laughs> on Sunday morning. So I mean we got very well uh, fed. And then uh, we headed off to Washington, and he was telling me about how the last time he had been to a baseball game in Washington, it was with Granny, and they rode the train up uh, to watch the Senators play, so that was before I was born. <laughs> it had been a while, uh, to say the least. And so uh, we get to the, the parking lot, uh, and they actually had a bus that we could get on to where they took us right over to the front of the stadium so we didn't have to walk too far or anything like that. And we get to the game and he kept asking me, do you have the tickets? Do you have the tickets? Well, they were on my phone. Cause you know, it was like one of those things that they could scan. And he's just like, um, get the tickets out. And so I was like, oh, here's that. He's like, what are these? And I'm like, just follow me, we'll go in. And uh, like I said, the tickets were really cheap. So uh, we were on like the second level and uh, we took the elevator up to second level and we were still a little bit before the game started. I said, Grandpa, like you need to go to the bathroom or anything. Like that was my excuse to like send him into the bathroom and sneak off to buy some water or some Coke because I, I didn't want him having a heart attack or anything, find out that a water cost $9 at the ballpark. <laughs> So he comes out of the bathroom and he looks me straight in the eye and says, Son, these bathrooms are way too nice for a ballpark. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, we had a great day and I had a good ride home, but uh, that was that was definitely one of my favorite uh, grandpa memories. Double date, double date, yeah. Uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, so, um,. <laughs> Everybody in this family that's an adult, except for Uncle Bill, thank you, Uncle Bill, for not trying to set me up. I think everybody else has had a friend that knows a friend at some point. It's uh, trying to set me up on a date. So, uh, Grandpa had a friend from AA that had a daughter. And uh, he just figured, you know, you're single, you should meet this young lady. And uh, and he was willing to, to be a wingman, which, I mean, if you've never had a wingman experience with your grandfather, it's a pretty unique experience. Uh, but he, he kept asking me, you know, I was in outside sales, so I was traveling out of town a lot of the time. When are you going to be in town? You need to be, yeah, I'm sorry, her name is escaped. Uh, but, but they, so every week at AA, you know, we come back up, you know, when, when is he going to be in town? When are we going to do the state? So finally he says, uh, are you available on Tuesday next week? And I was just like, oh, I'm not going out of town next week. Sure. You know, he was very persistent. It took me a day or so, and I looked at my calendar and I said, oh my gosh, Tuesday is Valentine's Day. Okay, so, but Grandpa did all the hard work. He uh, he picked the restaurant, which was the Outback Steakhouse down on Broad Street. He, he picked up both the ladies, you know, the mom and the daughter, and drove them over to Outback. It was like five o'clock we met there on Valentine's Day. Um, the parking lot is totally full. Like, I mean, you almost had to park at Hooters across the street. I was going that would have been an even more interesting day. Crap. But, nonetheless, we get there, and of course, like, you couldn't make a reservation, right? So we put our name on the wait list, and they're like, oh, it'll be about an hour. Fantastic. So, uh, you know, they were very nice and hospitable here at, at this uh, this outback on Valentine's Day. And so they brought these little samples of blooming onions in these little cups with the, with the sauce and everything. So, I don't know, Grandpa and I were making some jokes about blooming onions and 
Australia, it was just falling flat. I mean, we we were not connecting. I'll just put it that way. And so Grandpa goes, well, do you want to get your date a beer? Okay, I guess I could do that. Uh, you know, I was trying to be respectful and everything of the fact that he met this lady at Alcoholics Anonymous. So. <laughs> it's like, okay, if he told me, <laughs> it's a, it's a, is that permission? You know, oh yeah, sure. So I got her, her a beer too, so we were having a beer. So we're, we're going through dinner, and uh, yeah, the beer was gone. He said, do you want to get a second beer? So I was like, uh, okay. So we get to pay. <laughs> The ladies had a coupon. <laughs> oh, Valentine's Day. Oh, well, it was just like a discount. If you spend, I don't know what it was. So I'm like, no, I got this. Don't worry about it, you know. So, hey, thanks for the coupons. Anyway. Um, so so I'm, I'm driving back out to the West End. He's going back to Mechanicsville with the ladies. And uh, it, this was pre-stroke. He said, Ryan's not very good at follow-up. <laughs> so you may not hear from him. <laughs> so he covered for me again. <laughs> and, uh, so he was always really witty with stuff like that and quick to like take a joke and stuff. And was, uh, he made it, he was the one that made it fun. For sure. I mean we could have been with any two ladies, I, I imagine. <laughs> Two grandpa memories from being an adult that I would never have had if I had never moved to Richmond. That's right. distant from us, but uh, once Granny passed away, I feel like Grandpa really traveled a lot, because he doesn't really care about anybody, <laughs> and uh, I think it has a big part, and uh, I always appreciated him coming to my baseball games. And uh, I know also when Granny passed away, he uh, he would invite Bethany and I over in the mornings before school, so we'd wake up earlier, which as a child, you know, you're not trying to wake up earlier for school when you already have to wake up early. But we'd wake up earlier and get dropped off at Granny and Grandpa's house um, off of, I think it was Shady Grove, was it? I forget the names of the roads. Um, but, you know, Grandpa would try to whip us up a good breakfast, which... You know, good, I guess, is a word that can be used in lots of different ways. <laughs> from an effort standpoint, I'd say it was good from a taste and how old are these peaches, Grandpa? Um, <laughs> standpoint, they weren't so good. Um, but he would make us little silver dollar pancakes that were, you know, the size of like an Oreo. And he'd be like, you want another one? I'm like, yes, yeah, please. Um, and he would, he would cook us some Spam with some uh, questionable pieces of hair inside of them. Or, you know, things like that. And so, growing up, I um, had a lot of good memories of Grandpa, uh, you know, bringing us to school in the morning, uh, talking to us, telling us stories, saying... Uh, his different catchphrases like, hey, you know, we're off like a herd of turtles, and, you know, <laughs> things like that, making remarks about people or things, and uh, it was always funny listening to him, and I always told my friends that my grandpa was one of the best people uh, for telling stories, and just uh, listening to him was always a blast. Um, so, I know we all miss him, and appreciate him, and I uh, just wanted to say a little bit about grandpa. Like right. 
two days after that, we were making pancakes. <laughs> I looked down and the pancake was cooking and I went, oh my God, I think an eyelash was in it. I was like, this is too ironic. <laughs> it must have been Grandpa. Yeah. Though. Yeah. <laughs> You know, what the minister said was true today about resurrection. It was true. Your dad, grandfather, and my AA sponsor. They didn't have a real big heart. And a lot of times they were scared to show up. We're all scared to show up a lot of times. But they have a real big heart. You know, why did I pick him to be my AA sponsor, you know? And I'm going uh, to mention that uh, I'm having some difficulties, yeah. Listen, something gets a hold of you like that, it's different. I'll let us feel it a little bit. The truth of my life is just starting. You know, Randy was one of the first people I met. In AA, and uh, it took all the courage I had to ask him to be my sponsor. I'm going to tell you, it took all the courage I had. Uh, but uh, if he said no, I don't know what I would have done then. I don't know what I would have done. But thank you, God, he said yes. Thank you, God. And, uh, I love these stories. Uh, it was funny, you know, uh, Connie and I were talking that uh, Ogie Carmichael could have been <laughs> her step grandfather. And then later she went into somebody who. Family with a friend with Cody Carmichael or something. I mean, some random person. You know, I've come to the conclusion that we don't meet people in our lives by accident. You know, there's a reason that we all come together. And uh, there's a reason Randy and I came together because uh, you saved a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I went to Africa on a mission trip uh, later in recovery, and uh, I remember he didn't think too much of that. What in the hell are you going to Africa? <laughs> <laughs> so a waste of money. And, hey. But for me personally, that was, uh, gave me uh, sort of the courage to, uh, Take an AA meeting, when I got back, take an AA meeting to the, the Monkey Regional Jail up in Hanover County. I did that for 10 years. <laughs> and Randy went with me for, I forget how long, two or three years, so it wasn't too long before he had his stroke when he died for a guest. But I remember him saying, you know, the only deals he had in jail was when he go bail out one of his employees from the moving company before that. <laughs> And uh, he just was surprised. Just surprised he he'd go to jail talking to these people. Um, but you know, it gives people. He did that for two or three years. You know, and it gives people hope too. They really lost a lot of hope. He did that meals on wheels. Um, he, he did a little bit of that uh, tutoring kids in Hanover County Schools. 
was active in the uh, European club. Uh, so anyway, I'm missing. I'm missing. Why? Are you gonna I guess that's it. I'm going. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I'm saying two things. So I love you, mom. Too. I love you, mom. Too. So anyway, I'm going to thank you.
the first one was a while ago. I think it was before Grandpa stroke. And he was telling me that he had taken his church group to a movie, but he felt like it may have been inappropriate. <laughs> and I asked him, he said nobody thought it was funny except for him. And so I asked him what movie he took him to, and it was Borat. <laughs> <laughs> so he said he wouldn't pick the movie anymore. <laughs> Some of the other things that cracked me up about Grandpa is his times when he was staying in Lynchburg. And I don't know if you all had ever been there, but it was a really cool place. They had a movie theater, a little like bowling alley, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And they had the movie uh, Saving Private Ryan playing. <laughs> And Grandpa decided that at some point in the middle of the night he was going to change the marquee on the sign, so he changed it to Saving Ryan's Private. <laughs> and another time, um, he had, I guess they got, told him not to go to the gym, but he'd gone to the gym and he fell off the treadmill and he was bleeding and he had broken his glasses so they were kind of hanging off his face and rather than go get cleaned up he decided to meet the group of people that were coming in to <laughs> see if their families could come stay here <laughs> and he told them that this was not the place to bring your family because this is what they let happen to you <laughs> Thanks, Eric, for the microphone and the music. <laughs> 